rifle range where the components of rifle marksmanship training are put together to give you the confidence will knowledge and skills required to fire a rifle effectively and accurately in combat During the next 24-hour block of instruction, you will learn what is known as the integrated act of shooting. Very simply, the integrated act of shooting consists of two things. One, aiming the weapon, and two, holding the weapon steady. Aiming is further subdivided into two elements. One being sight alignment, and two being placement of the aiming point. I'm here talking with Crackshot Crackshot, leading expert and Crackshot in his own right. Crackshot, what is the technique that you use for obtaining correct sight alignment and placement of the aiming point? Well, uh, actually, uh, I have my very own special weapon, which I have uh, invented to help me uh, uh, myself uh, in, in obtaining the uh, proper sight alignment and to uh, achieve the uh, ever-popular placement of the uh, uh, aiming point, uh, thereby allowing me to be the, uh, 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 the, the crack shot that, uh, that, I, that I naturally am. I see. Do you have this weapon with you? Uh, uh, well, yes, yes, I do. Would you show us? Uh, well, well, yes, yes. Uh, th this is it right here. As you can see, it's uh, slightly modified here in the uh, rear and the front. No, uh, the uh, front rear and the front sight post uh, here. Yes, well, that's an M16. Well, well, yes, uh, it is. Uh, only slightly modified, as you can see here. Oh yes, it is modified. But how does that help you? Uh, well, what I do is I take. Uh, the front and the rear sight post here, and to be assured of a direct hit is to uh, align them in such a manner as to uh, put this in the center of uh, uh, this, uh, thereby allowing me to... Uh what Crackshot is trying to explain here is that correct sight alignment is obtained when the front sight post appears to be in the center of the rear sight aperture. The aiming point is correctly placed when it is centered on and tangent to the top of the front sight post. Correct sight alignment and placement of the aiming point together form a correct sight picture. Applying these techniques properly then, the rifleman would successfully engage targets at various ranges. If, however, the firer has proper sight alignment but does not place his aiming point correctly, the error to his targets will remain constant as the range to those targets increases. If the aiming point is properly placed but the firer's sight alignment is incorrect, the rifleman's error to his targets increases as the range to those targets increases. It is for this reason, then, that sight alignment is considered the more important of these two elements of aiming. Uh, also, it is important for me to remember to uh, focus my eye 
on the uh, front sight post uh, last before I uh, fire and... Uh, what Crackshot is trying to explain here is that the last focus of the eye, that instant the weapon is fired, should be on the front sight post. A perfect sight picture should look like this. An indistinct rear sight aperture, a clear front sight post, and a hazy aiming point. By maintaining a clear, distinct front sight post, the fire can more readily obtain correct sight alignment and a perfect sight picture. The second component of the integrated active shooting is holding the weapon steady. There are eight factors which affect steady hold with the rifle. These steady hold factors are similar for all the primary positions. Standing. Kneeling supported kneeling unsupported, foxhole supported, and unsupported. And of course, the ever popular prone supported and unsupported. These eight steady hold factors concern, first of all, the left hand and arm which are neatly joined together at the left wrist. Bend at the left elbow, and all blend in perfectly here at the left shoulder. Hmm. Well, anyway, here's how it should look. The rifle should rest in the V formed by the thumb and forefinger of the left hand and across the heel of the hand. The grip on the rifle should be relaxed, but at the same time, exerting a slight rearward pressure. The left wrist should be kept straight and the left elbow as far under the rifle as the conformation of the body permits. The second important steady hold factor is the butt of the stock in the fire's shoulder pocket. I use uh, my shoulder pocket to keep my uh, cigarettes, and some pens and pencils, crayons, and my chewing gum. And That's your chest pocket, crack shot. Oh. Oh, yes, my chest pocket, yeah. The fire must place the butt of the stock firmly into the pocket formed in the right shoulder. The proper placement of the butt lessens the effect of recoil, helps steady the weapon, and prevents the butt of the stock from riding up on the shoulder when the weapon is fired. Third of the eight steady hold factors is the grip of the right hand. I use my right hand to grip my cigarettes and my crayons, my pens and my pencils Crack and my... shot! The pistol grip rests in the V formed by the thumb and forefinger of the right hand. The forefinger is placed on the trigger so that a slight amount of daylight can be seen between the side of the receiver and the forefinger. The remaining fingers are wrapped tightly around the pistol grip. Apply a slight rearward pressure with the right hand to keep the butt of the stock in the pocket of the shoulder. Keep the pressure firm enough to provide for minimum recoil effect. Which brings us to the often used, little talked of, right elbow. The right elbow provides balance to the firer's position. The correct position helps to form the shoulder pocket for the butt of the stock but the exact location of the right elbow will vary in each firing position. The fifth important steady hold factor is the firer's stock weld. The firm contact between the firer's cheek and the stock is called the stock weld. The stock weld has two important functions. First, to keep my chewing gum in. Uh... First, by placing his cheek against the same spot on the stock each time a round is fired, the firer keeps his eye in the same relationship with the rear sight, therefore assuring a consistent sight picture. Secondly, by placing the cheek firmly against the stock, the weapon and the firer's head recoil together, 
reducing the amount of time required to recover and aim between shots. The firer should try to control any body movement that will affect the weapon, and for this reason should learn to hold his breath for a few seconds while aiming and firing. The sixth steady hold factor then would be to take a normal breath, release part of it, and hold the remainder. Holding your breath for a period of more than 10 seconds, however, could cause muscular tension and trembling. And for longer periods, severe headaches, brain damage, and eventually permanent death. Relaxation is the seventh steady hold factor. The fire must learn to relax as much as possible in any firing position. If the fire finds that he cannot relax in a certain firing position, he should adjust that position to eliminate the cause of strain. Certain firing positions must be adjusted to the firer's particular body conformation. The eighth and most important of the steady hold factors is trigger control. And without its proper application, the other marksmanship skills are practically useless. Trigger control is the independent action of the forefinger on the trigger, pressing the trigger straight to the rear with a uniformly increasing pressure until the weapon fires. The forefinger should be placed on the trigger at a point between the tip of the finger and the second joint. The finger should not touch the side of the receiver. This would interfere with the application of steady pressure to the rear. The majority of shooting errors stem directly or indirectly from the improper application of this technique. Failure to hit the target may be caused by the firer jerking the trigger. Correctly applied trigger control will prevent the firer from knowing exactly when the rifle will fire and reduce the firer's tendency to flinch. And you might be able to get a good sight fixer and apply the factors of steady hold. But if you're afraid of the rifle, when you fire, you won't be able to apply proper trigger control. You see, there's nothing to be afraid of. Now my humble assistant, leading expert at crash on his own right, will show you how to avoid the effects of recoil. Uh, well, uh, actually, I, I didn't feel a thing. <sighs> we can see, then, that the fire has nothing to fear from the recoil of the weapon. Nevertheless, at the beginning of your preparatory marksmanship training, your shot groups may be a bit too large and out of shape.
failure to get a good shot group may be caused by errors in aiming or by violating one of the eight steady hold factors. By analyzing these shot groups, errors can be detected and corrected. Follow-through is used in every sport. In rifle marksmanship, if the principles of follow-through are applied, the fire can detect errors which were present when the rifle was fired. By holding the sight picture for just a moment after the weapon fires, the fire can see the error, analyze it, and have a basis for correcting it. Proper follow-through consists of continuing to press the trigger to the rear, concentrating on the front sight post, and holding your breath. All this just a moment after the weapon fires. Closely related to follow-through is the process known as calling the shot. When the fire calls the shot, he indicates that point on the target at which his rifle was aimed the instant the round was fired. By calling the shot, each fire can establish a hit-aim relationship, enabling him to correct many errors in applying the integrated act of shooting. Right! To help in detecting and analyzing shooting errors, the firing data card is used. The firing data card provides the instructor and the firer with a record of calls, hits, and firing positions used. If used properly, the firer and assistant instructor can analyze the firer's progress. After the three-round shot group is fired, the firer goes downrange to check his target. By comparing the hit target with the call target, the firer and assistant instructor can often detect errors committed in the integrated act of shooting. Next, the fire conducts a progress check. Each fire fires three three-round shot groups from each of the primary firing positions. Using a shot group template, the assistant instructor checks each of the three rounds fired from each position. For the supported positions, the three rounds must lie within the smaller circle on the template. For the other less stable positions, the larger template circle is used. Once the soldier has demonstrated his ability to fire tight three round shot groups, it is then only a matter of adjusting the sights on the rifle to place the strike of the bullet where the firer wants it. In adjusting sights, there are two variables to be considered. These are elevation and windage. The sights of the M16A1 rifle are unique in that both the front and rear sights are adjustable. The front sight is adjustable for elevation. Elevation is raising or lowering the strike of the bullet. To raise the elevation, rotate the front sight post with a cartridge or other sharp object in the direction of the arrow. Rotating the sight one click will raise the strike of the bullet one half of one of the squares on the target. Two clicks will raise the strike of the bullet one whole square. To lower the strike of the bullet, just rotate the sight post the desired number of clicks in the opposite direction of the arrow.
The rear sight is adjustable for windage. Windage is moving the strike of the bullet to the left or to the right. The windage drum is located on the side of the carrying handle. To move the strike of the bullet to the right on the target, rotate the windage drum the desired number of clicks in the direction of the arrow, remembering still that one click is equal to one half square on the target. To move the strike of the bullet to the left on the target, rotate the windage drum the desired number of clicks in the opposite direction of the arrow. We'll be adjusting our sights now to a point where we are not aiming. This may cause you to wonder. Let's explain by first stating that rifle zero is that sight setting in elevation and windage which will cause the trajectory of the round and the line of sight to coincide at a given range. It's been proven that the majority of infantry combat targets appear at a range of less than 300 meters. For this reason, Army doctrine states that all riflemen will battle sight zero their rifles for a range of 250 meters. Battle site zero is that sight setting in elevation and windage, which will cause the trajectory of the round and the line of sight to coincide at a range of 250 meters. The firer's line of sight travels in a straight line. The round, leaving the muzzle, will rise until it reaches its maximum ordinate, then descend as it loses velocity. The point where the trajectory of the round and the line of sight intersect will be the zero of the weapon. As we can see, they intersect at a distance of 250 meters. One way to assure a good zero on your weapon would be to place the target at a distance 250 meters downrange. This could become a bit tiring though, since the fire has to do quite a bit of traveling between his position and the target, making the necessary changes on his weapon and checking his target. Army tests have proven, however, that when the trajectory of the M16 rifle and the line of sight intersect at a range of 250 meters, the trajectory of the round will be 2.4 centimeters below the line of sight at a range of 25 meters. For this reason, a black X is placed on the 25 meter target exactly 2.4 centimeters below the point of aim. The soldier lines his sight on the point of aim the bottom of the cutaway portion, but adjusts his sights until the strike of the round is on the black X below the point of aim. The line of sight and the trajectory of the round will then intersect at a range of 250 meters. Remember, aiming the weapon consists of correct sight alignment and placement of the aiming point. There are eight steady hold factors which must be adhered to. They are proper placement of the left hand and arm, 
the butt of the stock in the pocket of the shoulder, the grip of the right hand, the location of the right elbow, the stock weld, control of breathing, relaxation, and the ever popular, most important, trigger control. Is there anyone down range? Is there anyone down range? These are the basic components of rifle marksmanship. It is now up to you to make use of this knowledge in developing these skills. The firing line is no longer clear. Firers, unlock your weapons. To become proficient in what you've learned, to fire your weapon on the range and in the field, Firers, commence firing when ready. Both accurately and effectively! Yeah.